Okay, so in this video, I want to show you how to legally cheat when trying to understand rotations. So what I have here is a regular coordinate point x, y. And when we're trying to understand rotations, typically these are going to be the notes you give. I mean, these are the notes that I gave my students as far as what are going to be the new coordinates if you rotate 9 degrees clockwise, if you rotate 9 degrees counterclockwise, 270, 180. And once you quickly start looking at all those definitions, it kind of starts to look pretty, pretty confusing. And so I told my students, I'm like, hey, here's the formal stuff. But in reality, I don't want you to really have to feel like you want to memorize this. I want you to legally cheat. And they're like, what are you talking about? Well, I said, obviously, look at the clock. That's the fastest and the easiest way, the first way you can cheat. Because if I'm asking you to do something clockwise, you just go with the rotation of the clock, right? And for, for you guys, you know, it'd be this way. And the same way goes for counterclockwise. You can just look at the clock and recognize the opposite direction of the way the clock turns. Now, to understand though this x, y idea of like what negative, when do you swap them, and how do those rules work, what we're going to do is we're going to make some connections. And the way I want to understand these connections is taking this and rotating it. And the way that I really, really like students to kind of legally cheat is to take their sheet of paper and rotate it themselves. Why try to imagine what this new point is going to be? Or why try to imagine or try to remember what all those rules are for the coordinate points? Just simply take your sheet of paper. Randomly pick a coordinate point in the first quadrant. The first quadrant is the easiest to kind of recognize. Now, what I want you to understand here is what happens when I rotate this point and let's go, count, um, let's go clockwise. When I take this point, you can see this point has, represents a horizontal distance away from the origin of 3 and a vertical distance of 2. Now, when I go ahead and rotate, now again, this is going to be clockwise, right? So when I rotate this clockwise, for myself, now you can see the horizontal distance is 2 and the vertical distance is 3. However, there's even more because it's important for you to understand that when I rotate something clockwise here, it's now going to be in the fourth quadrant. Now, any coordinate points down in the fourth quadrant, the y coordinates can be negative, right? Because from the origin, you're going down. So the x and y's are going to get swapped, right? Instead of it being at 3 over, now I'm at 2 over. So my x and y coordinates get swapped. So now it's going to be y comma x. But now I'm in the fourth quadrant. So my second term is going to be negative, right? Because remember, <clears throat> a lot of times we call it the x term or the y term. But in reality, we're just talking about the second term that represents the vertical distance away from the origin. Now let's look at a rotation of counterclockwise, OK? And if we're going to go counterclockwise in this case, again, the same thing's happening. Horizontal distance of 3, vertical distance of 2. But when I rotate it now this way, now you can see there's a horizontal distance of 2 and a vertical distance of 3. So again, these horizontal and vertical distances are getting swapped. So again, to go from counterclockwise, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to swap my variables. And that's why we swap our variables in that case. All right? And furthermore, though, we now recognize we're in the second quadrant. Well, the horizontal distance is, or I'm sorry, the vertical distance is still going to be the same. But now what's happening is the horizontal distance is now going to the left. That means I'm going to negate my x term, or the first term in the coordinate point. All right? Now, the last thing I want to, to kind of look at is, again, let's go through this one last time. So we can rotate once. And if we rotate it again, so if we do 90 degrees counterclockwise and 90 degrees again, you can see now we are back now in the third quadrant. And additionally, though, our horizontal distance, which was originally 3 and vertical distance 2, is the same. Horizontal 3 and vertical 2. The only difference is, instead of it going to the left and up, we're now to the right and down. So now, you can see my coordinate points are going to remain the same. Now the only difference is, I'm going to negate the x and negate the y. So, Typically, you know, students will go and look at this and we'll, you know, go ahead and say the, you know, clockwise a 90 degree rotation for my coordinate point and we can go ahead and represent that as a clockwise rotation as y comma negative x. And that's going to be the rule. 180 degrees, you know, clockwise, that's going to be a negative x, negative y. And if you did a 270 degrees clockwise, you can see that now rule is going to be a negative y and negative x. But I don't really like to understand or to try to memorize all of those. And obviously, one last one, if you go 360, right, what you'll recognize is you're going to get the exact same point. That's just going to be your original point x, y. right? Because if I take this 
and I go clockwise, so that's 90, 180, 270, and then 360, right? And recognize that that 270 is the same thing as going 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we really need to only understand the directions in one way. And in reality, all I really want you to take away from this legal cheating is one, knowing the direction of the clock, but then two, just recognizing when I rotate clockwise, the coordinates are swapping and my y coordinate is gonna be negated. Here, when I rotate counterclockwise, my x and y coordinates are swapping, are swapping and my x coordinate is gonna be negated. And if you can understand that those two rotations, then it will make sense because you can keep on swapping them and negating to get to your 180 and then to do any other rotation that you need. So whenever I told my students to take their tests, I'm like, I better see you legally cheating. Right? I don't want you actually cheating, but I want you to either take out your scratch piece of paper and just draw a little you know, points because you know, when we do rotations, we're gonna do you know, polygons and triangles and you know, all lines and all this kind of stuff. It can get confusing. But if we can understand how the rotations, about, at least about the origin, is going to be impacting the graph, then that's what's going to help us um, understand to be able to apply them for different problems. So there's a little tip and trick for you um, to be able to apply rotations about the origin. So about a point about the origin. About a different point, that's in for a different video, which I'll link down soon. Cheers.